Why do we buy what we buy? Is it only a matter of price and quality? Are buying decisions based purely on rational reasoning? Marketing experts are increasingly focusing on our subconscious behavioral patterns, especially during difficult economic times. The battle for the senses has begun. As consumers, we are spoiled for choice. Products are becoming more and more alike. The hidden seducers are targeting our sense of touch, our eyes, our nose, our ears. Usually this all takes place behind closed doors. Rarely does anyone talk about subtle marketing. But we are about to look behind the scenes of the hidden seducers. How is the scent of a hotel created? Why do experts labor for months to get the right tone from a vacuum cleaner? And who would have thought a couple of years ago that we would now be buying expensive white cars, a color trend that had been planned long in advance? Coincidence was yesterday. The calculated power of the senses is today. We begin our journey into the kingdom of seduction in Berlin. The international hotel chain Swiss Hotel has a problem. There are too many hotels in the capital. They all have good beds. So what is that certain something that would set them apart? And how can that message be conveyed subtly without speaking a single word? Swiss Hotel wants to hire an expert with a very special nose, Cecil Tolas, a chemist. Harvard lecturer, artist, and smell designer. She is acknowledged worldwide as one of the most creative members of her profession. In her Berlin laboratory, she's been collecting olfactory samples from around the world and can replicate nearly every odor. Cecil Tolas has already developed scents for world-renowned fashion labels, sporting goods, and electronics manufacturers. But nearly all of her customers treat fragrance design like a state secret. As a geruch is, um, as a bit of geruchs arbeiten, is a sehr, uh, sein Traum für Marketing. Also, das geht sofort in die Unterbewusstheit, uh, das Gehirn. Sofort bewegt man dann die Erinnerung und die Emotions und ja. Smell, it's a powerful sense. We can shut our eyes, but not our nose. Cecil is fascinated by the world of smells. Whenever she comes to a new place, she takes a deep breath, takes notes, and analyzes what is around us, even if it's the smell of a garbage bin. Ja, die Nase ist völlig vernachlässigt, unsere Gesellschaft. Die Tatsache ist, dass wir ohne Bilder, ohne äh, Geräusche überleben können, aber ohne Luft gar nicht. Also im Moment, wenn wir aufhören zu atmen, hört das Leben auf. Und jeder Atemzug inhalieren wir Geruchmoleküls an Maß und das ist ähm, also Millionen von, von Informationen, die da durch unser System einfach strömt und wir wissen überhaupt nicht, wie damit anzufangen. People don't call Cecil Tolas when all they want is a pleasant citrus smell. You can get this in any drugstore. The Berlin-based Norwegian aspires to use aromas to express what advertising experts usually convey in words and images. Today, she is meeting her new client for the first time. Das ist Prinzip das erste Projekt, was wir gerne anfangen möchten und dann mhm. insgesamt möchten wir für unser ganz Hotels weltweit mhm. einen Geruch kreieren, der den Gästen noch einen Sinn mehr gibt, wenn sie unsere Halle betreten mhm. und den sie in Erinnerung behalten, wenn sie uns verlassen. Und mhm. wenn sie wieder in ein anderes Hotel kommen weltweit, nach Beijing oder nach Indien, dass genau. sie den Geruch eben wieder finden. Genau. Zu, 
das ist das, was wir uns so vorgestellt haben. Mhm. In unserem jugendlichen Leichtsinn. Wir würden halt nur gerne sehen, ist das möglich, das durchzusetzen. Genau. Also ich äh, brauche ganz viel Material. Wir haben angefangen, ja. wir, haben, wir haben schon mal zusammengestellt. The research for the new Swiss Hotel Scent can now begin. Erstmal sammle ich sehr viele Eindrücke und versuche die verschiedenen Gerüche der Materialien aufzunehmen. Erstmal mit meiner eigenen Nase, weil ähm, Materialien ein Teil von dieser Identität des Wissens ist. Und äh, die haben mich auch gebeten, ein bisschen darauf zu fokussieren. What do the curtains and pillows smell like? How about the leather couches, the lobby, and the stone floor? Before Cecil Tolas decides what effect the new hotel scent should have, she uses her nose to determine the hotel's character. Generell ist es sehr klar, sehr äh, geradlinig, teilweise ein bisschen ohne Seele. Ich muss mal gucken, wo ich da ein bisschen Seele reinkriegt, also ein bisschen Wärme, weil das ist ziemlich cool alles und äh, ja, die wollen auch ein bisschen Wärme reinbringen und aber das kann ich nicht einfach nur so von irgendwas nehmen, ich muss es auch finden. Ich suche dann diese Wärme in den Materialien eventuell oder vielleicht in die Schweiz, mal gucken, ja? It's a long road ahead before the final scent is created. When possible, Cecil Tola searches for authentic smells. She doesn't think in categories of good and bad. Bei mir gibt es keine bad and good. Bei mir gibt es nur Geruch. Alle Gerüche haben eine Chance. Was ist denn gut, die Geruch? Was ist denn schlechte Geruch? Warum? You know, warum ist dieser Geruch schlecht und die nicht? What might sound strange at first actually has a very disdainful goal. It's all about money. And it's about how Swiss Hotel can attract as many new guests as possible and make the old ones want to return. So uh, erwächst du die Aufmerksamkeit, so kriegst du Kunden, so kommen die Kunden immer wieder. Dass die Leute kommen rein und denken, aha, ich rieche hier was. Ist nicht nur, dass man sich vielleicht wohlfühlt, aber dieser Geruch beinhaltet gewisse Informationen, die wir sonst nicht rüber bekommen, über genau diese Hotel oder genau diese Firma. Cecil Tolas will spend the next six months working on a new hotel scent. What is the smartest way to seduce us into spending money? In a spectacular new project, Dutch researchers are studying the power of the senses. At the University of Wageningen, employees are eating in an average cafeteria. Or so it seems. But appearances can deceive. Twenty-seven hidden cameras film every hand movement of the guests. Do they reach for the salad or the soup? Do they take water or a Coke? At the cash register, a scale embedded in the floor weighs each single customer. With the help of these long-term observations, psychologists and economists want to discover how our subconscious works. A large part of the project's financing comes from the industrial sector. Es ist ja alles sehr subtil und das ist auch, warum es so, so ein ungeheuer äh, faszinierendes Forschungsbereich ist. Und das Entscheidende ist, dass es ein Erlebnis gibt für Konsument. Was ist das ja? Was bedeutet das für, für wie es aussieht, wie es schmeckt, wie es duftet? Und das, das hat damit zu tun, dass oft das Unbewusste viel wichtiger ist, wenn man äh, sich etwas auswählt im Bereich von, von, von Essen und Trinken. Das heißt also, wir wissen ganz eigentlich nicht, warum wir tun, was wir tun. That's why scientists have come up with the idea of the Big Brother Cafeteria. To gather as much valid information as possible. René and his colleagues know from experience when people are asked about their eating habits, they tend to give answers that don't really match reality. 
Wenn wir Menschen mit Fragenbogen gefragt haben, was möchten sie, was finden sie wichtig, immer war das, was da rauskam, nicht ganz, was wir in der Praxis auch feststellten. Und ja, wir suchten, was ist für uns die Möglichkeit, äh, um nicht mit Fragenbogen, aber trotzdem festzustellen, was machen Leute. Und Beobachtung, das ist ja Technik, die auch in der Psychologie genutzt wird, äh, bedeutet, dass wir hier im Restaurant mit, äh, mit Kameras äh, filmen, feststellen, was geschieht, so dass wir beobachten können, worauf Menschen reagieren, so dass wir es nicht mal äh, fragen müssen. The cameras are no secret to the guests. In fact, everyone must sign a letter of consent when visiting the cafeteria for the first time. But those who come here daily for lunch eventually forget about the cameras. It's an ideal laboratory setting for the scientists. What kinds of decisions do the guests make when confronted with minor changes? The red light instead of green. The smell of the open kitchen. The constant flowing of pop or classical music. An example. A few days ago, a coffee machine was installed in the cafeteria, even though a machine in the hallway offers the same coffee for free. Researchers wanted to know why are guests willing to pay for coffee? The coffee from the free machine? The coffee from the cafeteria machine? Or the coffee from an expensive professional machine? How does the type of machine influence our choice? Wir versuchen festzustellen, was ist es, warum sie das tun? Ist das, weil die Maschine so gut aussieht? Ist das wie die Ton und die, das Geräusch und, und, und die Duft von Kaffee? Oder ist das ganz einfach das Geschmack von Kaffee? Wir wissen ja, dass es ziemlich komplex ist. Und wir möchten gerne feststellen, was die individuellen Komponenten, was für einen Wert die haben. Is it really only the taste that influences our decision? Behind the scenes of the cafeteria, an experiment begins. A precise amount of coffee aroma is infused into a test person's nose with a tube. Through the mouthpiece comes coffee flavoring. Videos of three different coffee machines appear on screen. The subjects are then instructed to rate the tastes. The machine from the cafeteria, the expensive professional machine, and the vending machine with a free coffee. The results are hardly surprising. The taste from the expensive professional machine is consistently ranked highest. But what the test subjects don't know, the infused smells and tastes were identical for every machine. So the actual coffee quality plays a much smaller role than we think. We don't act rationally, but let our senses fool us. An important discovery for the researchers. I think that what we see from it will be more with things like light, tone and duft. That it is used also in the marketing, that it is so to say experienced. The cafeteria experiment has only just begun and will continue for another 10 years. But the researchers already concur. Yes, we can be lured into buying things through controlling our senses. How products sound is another thing manufacturers rarely leave to chance. We are at German electronic manufacturer Miele. A new vacuum cleaner model is nearly ready to go into production, but its sound is not quite right just yet. The company hires Friedrich Blutner, a highly specialized psychoacoustician from Saxony. Trained as an instrument maker, Blutner and his team are to find out what the vacuum cleaner should sound like to make as many customers as possible want to buy it. The machine's design will then be modified according to their recommendations. Yeah, it is quite interesting what all 
so sich mit Sound inzwischen beschäftigt. Also ursprünglich war es vorzugsweise im Automobilbau, ist ja das Beispiel bekannt, die Tür, das Zuschlaggeräusch. Dann kommen die Hausgeräte, dann kommen mehr und mehr Leute aus der Nahrungsmittelakustik, also auch Geräusche äh, zum Beispiel von Verpackungen bei Nahrungsmitteln. Aber auch die Geräusche, wenn man Nahrung aufnimmt, also diese typischen Bissgeräusche. The search for the perfect vacuum cleaner sound begins here in the middle of the Ore Mountains. Friedrich Blutner located his company far away from the big cities. For the psychoacoustician, the forest is an important source of inspiration. Here, he finds basic acoustic patterns which have shaped our hearing for millennia. Das Ohr ist ja ursprünglich ein Warnorgan. Es warnt uns vor Gefahren. Und da hat sich eigentlich das Gehör heraus entwickelt. Und man kann natürlich solche Uhrmuster sehr gut im Wald aufnehmen. Das ist ja bekannt, wenn jetzt ein kleiner Ost knackt hinter mir, da würde ich mich umschauen, ich würde erschrecken. Ja, das sind so Geräusche. Und je nachdem, wie stark das Geräusch ist, daran kann ich erkennen, ob das ein großes Tier oder ein kleines Tier ist. Wir wollen natürlich nicht solche Geräusche in Haus geräten, weil uns das warnt, hier geht ja was kaputt, hier ist die Qualität nicht gegeben. Das heißt, hier lernen wir, was Störsignale genau sind. The next step in the quest for Miele's new vacuum cleaner sound begins in Blutner's test laboratory on the outskirts of the forest. A survey. Which products are already on the market? What do they sound like? Five experts, 30 different vacuum noises. The noises are rated on a scale from one to ten. The longer one listens, the clearer it becomes. Not all noises are alike. After half an hour of steady vacuuming, the first results. So, es gibt einen kleinen Sieger. Und es gibt eine Marke, über die wir jetzt nicht sprechen wollen, die also akustisch eigentlich nicht tragbar ist. Negativbeispiel ist es der. Ja. <lacht> Das heißt, es gibt noch viel zu tun. Sicherlich sind äh, äh, Verkaufsargumente Nachhaltigkeit und eine gute Qualität, eine solide, gute Qualität. Und wenn das akustisch auch vermittelt werden kann, dann ist es sicherlich für ein Produkt günstiger. Und dann kommt ja dazu, dass die Menschen inzwischen auch akustisch hellhöriger geworden sind. Die achten inzwischen schon auf negative Pfeiftöne und auf unangenehmes Klappern. Und deswegen muss man sich eben doch mit diesen Dingen mehr beschäftigen wie noch vor 20 Jahren, weil inzwischen auf sowas auch geachtet wird. Smell designer Sissel Tolas is on her way from Berlin to Switzerland. She wants to gather different smells for the new scent she's creating for the hotel chain Swiss Hotel. The smell should be complex and contain many different elements. It should be as authentic as possible. Vor allem, was es hier äh, mich interessiert, ist die Schweiz. Ja, wie, wie riecht es Schweiz? Und kann ich überhaupt Gerüche wahrnehmen in der sauberen Schweiz? Und kann ich Berge riechen? Wie, wie kann ich die Geruch von den Bergen vergleichen mit der Stadt? Und so weiter. Und das ist, was mich hauptsächlich interessiert. Vor Ort kann man das am besten machen. Alpine Air, Snow and Wood Sense for a Hotel Lobby in Berlin. Cecil Tolas is also searching for typical Swiss smells in the city of Zurich. Will she find the warmth she wants to breathe into the cool hotel scent? It's very clean, you know, very clean, cool. I feel no warm smells, no spicy, exotic smells. It's just a clean, cool, 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 cool,
Küche oder so, ziemlich konventionelle Gerüche. Nicht, dass ich irgendwie sage, wow, das ist was Neues, das ist was, was ich noch nicht in diesem Kontext erwarte. Ja, sehr elementär irgendwie. Hm. Stein, Regen, Schnee, Holz, so wie ich mir das vorgestellt habe. Tja. In the shadows of the time-honored banks, Cecil Tolas has an idea. Even though it doesn't smell particularly good for a normal nose, this scent is supposed to play an important role for the Swiss hotel chain. Money. Interessant. Das wird ein Teil von meiner Geruch. Endeffekt werden. Mm. Aber ein bisschen komisch. Ich kann auch ein bisschen Käse riechen. Käse, ein bisschen Kuhmilch, ein bisschen Metall. Vielleicht ist es gerade Hand von einem Bauer gewesen oder so. <lacht> Who knows? <lacht> After the day's research, Cecil Tolas comes to the tried and true conclusion. Money doesn't stink. She now sets to work in her fragrance laboratory back in Berlin. Despite the high demand for Sizzle and her fragrances in the corporate world, she still finds time for her artwork. She's on a mission to make us more aware of the smells around us. The odor designer likes to play with existing odors and treats her work like an art project. This is a project that I über vier <coughs> extrem unterschiedliche Nachbarschaften in Berlin. Uh, dieses Projekt habe ich in ein Jahr gearbeitet und es wurde präsentiert in der Berlin Biennale 2004. Wir riechen alle anderes und das Projekt heißt No So I Am Without Borders. Also die Grenzen oben ist identifizierbar, unten ist das vielleicht extrem. Und das geht wirklich auch ein Projekt um Toleranz gegenüber das andere, was hier im, im Aspekt Geruch. Hier hast du Mitte und Charlottenburg. Ja, so ging es weiter und hier im Endeffekt hast du dann die ganze Berlin eine, eine Flanke. The olfactory identity of a city, the smells of good or bad neighborhoods, of luxury and poverty, and the emotions that come with them, it's all in these liquids. And now back to the Dutch cafeteria with its CCTV cameras. The researchers are changing the color of the lighting. Will the guests choose more salad if the light is green? Will the fish appear fresher under blue light? And will guests linger longer in colorful chairs? It's still too early for concrete results, but one thing is certain. Colors do influence our behavior. Per Nima is an expert on utilizing color to make big money. The Swede works for Agso Nobel, the world's largest color manufacturer. He spends most of his time on the road. Today's stop, Hamburg. Nima is paid to find out which colors his company can sell three years from now. After all, the consumer marketplace is vibrant and colors are changing constantly. A wrong colored product doesn't sell. Knowledge of future tastes and how to manipulate them is a treasured commodity. People are affected by what's going on in society at this time. So they want different colors. They want, they are affected by terrorism. They're affected by travel and fashion and all these other things happening, which makes them sensitive to, to new colors, to different colors, and they want to buy them. And we have to know what they want to buy before they know it. Which colors should our walls, furniture, and cars be three years from now? Per Nima is not interested in fleeting fashions, but only in lasting trends. The industry needs to know these at least two to three years in advance. Years ago, he predicted that many limousines today would be white, a color once considered low grade. I think that in the coming years, you'll see a lot more white cars. 
and not workman's vehicles, but regular cars and painted white. And we saw that a couple of years ago evolving with the ecological trend. And it's really about people uh, trying to prove to themselves that their car is white, pure, and clean and not polluting the air. But which color will be the next bestseller? Per Nima wanders around the trendiest neighborhoods, observing people, studying the latest designs, and visiting hip cafes. The chief designer of a billion dollar global corporation is always on the lookout for colors which could strike it rich three years from now. When you look in, a, in the store window, you're not looking at what color is there because that color is too late already. You're looking more for general things and general feelings of reading articles and if you can see if, if, if fashion is more feminine, what does that mean? Uh, so it's, it's not, when you look for color trends, you don't look for color. You look for everything else. In a few weeks, Per Nima will discuss the next European color trends with colleagues from around the world. They will agree upon a common direction, a color cartel. Per is gathering ideas for the meeting. Today, this store has caught his eye. A Hamburg designer is making stuffed animals out of used hand towels and selling them for a tidy profit. Do you want to see my, my towel collection? Can I show it to you? Yes, come. <laughs> you have a towel collection? Yes. I think you're probably the only man in the world with yes, a towel collection. Yes, yes, I'm the only man, yes. <laughs> Some color woven. Uh, there are different techniques in, yeah, in, in, in yeah. woven of t uh, toweling. Yeah, I want to start uh, um, a presentation with them. So you should. And it's fantastic. Thank yeah, you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's a great yeah. idea. Pear has detected a new trend, something he has seen emerging in other industries as well. The reuse of, of the material. Is, uh, is so totally in trend and in, in, in line with, um, with the ecological sustainability green design trend that we're in the middle of right now. I mean, you look at it, you see the oranges from the 70s, you see the stripes from the 50s, and that is just proof that it's reused. So it doesn't matter if the color is not trendy, it's, it's the trendy in itself because it's visibly reused. The trend toward the self-made, recycled, retro look. How will Per Nima transform all of these elements into colors that will appeal to the masses? I, I think that uh, saying today that I am not affecting by, affected by trends is extremely trendy in itself. So I am my own person and I don't care about trends. That is, that is the most trendy thing you could say, probably. Uh, and to say that I can live my life in Europe today without being affected by anything, I don't, it's not possible. It, it's, it's like saying I'm, a, I'm an eremit living in the cave. Uh, and we're not. But working far away from trendy cities can also be helpful in creating something unique. Back to the Ore Mountains. Friedrich Blutner, the psychoacoustician, is still looking for the ideal vacuum cleaner sound. Now it's the consumer's turn. The testers are to evaluate the noise of several vacuum cleaner models. Tonhaltigkeit, das heißt, wenn Sie in Pfeifen oder in ein Geräusch hören, was nicht zum Staubsauger gehört. Ein Punkt, wenn Sie gar nichts hören, nur das Rauschen. Oder zehn Punkte, wenn es sehr tonhaltig ist. Vier. Gut, dann gehen wir zum nächsten Gerät. The test results are a bit surprising. This loud blue vacuum cleaner receives an unexpectedly high score. A gut decision that is an important indication for the sound researcher. Das Überraschendste ist äh, zum Beispiel das, dass die Probanden, wenn die gewissermaßen in so einen Test abgefragt werden und wir auch die unbewussten Reaktionen erfragen, dass die dann sagen, Sackkraft ist wichtig, die, die sollen Power haben. 
Und wenn man dann hinterher noch mal locker bei einer Tasse Kaffee drüber redet, dann sagen manchmal dieselben Probanden, ja, sollte er nicht ein bisschen leiser sein? Also obwohl sie spontan vom, vom Emotionalen her die Kraft wünschen, dann über die Kognition, dann hört man eben, leise ist gut, dann so ins Grübeln kommt. Aber natürlich interessieren uns die spontanen Reaktionen und da ist eben offenbar Sagkraft ein wichtiges Kriterium. In other words, pleasant sounds alone do not necessarily make for good sales. <laughs> Wir haben jetzt die Stabsaugergeräusche äh, aufgenommen im Rechner und jetzt äh, verändern wir bestimmte Eigenschaften, um deren Auswirkungen mal zu testen. Ah, das ist das Pfeifen im Wald. Ja, ist zu aggressiv, ja? Mhm. So, und das stört jetzt der blöde Pfeifer, ja? da, da haben wir sie weg. The sounds that are artificially designed here will later provide a basis for the engineers. This is how the new vacuum cleaner should sound. Die Psyche des Menschen und gerade die Eindrücke im Zusammenhang mit dem Hören äh, sind nicht ganz so einfach, wie man sich das vorstellt, laut und leise. Das ist nur ein Parameter. Das ist vielleicht, so können Sie sich vorstellen, bei einer Suppe, die ist kalt und warm und die muss die richtige Temperatur haben. Und das können Sie mit dem Thermometer prüfen. Und wenn die Suppe die richtige Gradzahl erreicht hat, dann ist es gut. Aber nun ist es ja nicht so. Wenn man eine Suppe isst, dann soll es auch gut schmecken. Und da wird es dann schnell komplex. Und genauso ist es beim Geräusch. No whistling, not too quiet, not too shrill. The perfect noise. Here in a former ski hut in the Ore Mountains, the sound is being developed, which will soon be heard in thousands of European households. In the Swedish city of Malmö, the search continues. Which colors can the industry sell us three years from now? Per Nima from Axo Nobel is trying to get a sense of which directions popular taste will develop and how he can influence them. But sometimes, events steamroller even him, and world affairs dictate the latest colors. It can also come totally out of the blue, like uh, what happened in New York with 9-11. Uh, that had a big influence on color. Uh, we had a fairly pastel-colored palette before that. And that's, that fall, that autumn, we went from that pastel colors to very natural, very safe colors, safe combinations. Um, people would travel less and instead stay at home and paint their castle with safety. But usually the Swede is in control of the situation. As the chief designer of the world's largest color manufacturer, he can set trends himself. But he doesn't do this in a vacuum. Which direction is mass appeal heading now in light of the global economic crisis? Per Nima is trying to translate the impressions he gathered over the past weeks into concepts and colors. We're building a collection that has, of course, to do with trends. It's a new collection. <clears throat> and uh, we're trying to fit what we think are coming trend colors into a collection. And of course, it's, it's fascinating because the smaller the collection, the more difficult it is to make. Per Nima has to limit himself to only a few colors for the European conference in Bilbao. There, designers and manufacturers will come up with a new color direction. The AXO Nobel representative will introduce his favorite contenders. I, I think this group is a hot candidate. Blue is hope. Blue is freedom. Uh, it is so bad right now, the economy or terrorism, whatever it is, that you're actually forcing a hope trend or a believable uh, trend that, that fills you with, with uh, joy. Huh? You have also have a lot of green colors, which of course is the ecology, uh, environmental, uh, sustainable green design trend. I, I believe this, this is something that we'll see. And um, of course I'll fight for it, yeah. The powerful rustling of the forest serves as a model for Miele's new vacuum cleaner. 
the test results are now being implemented. Friedrich Blutner and his colleague are trying to find a way to artificially amplify the rustling sound. Man spielt mit dem Schall in diesen Stabsaucher. Man versucht es wie ein kleines Orchester mal zu verändern und beobachtet jetzt erstmal genau. Das ist eigentlich eine schöne Phase, eine kreative Phase, in der wir uns jetzt hier befinden. The sound engineers address every part of the vacuum cleaner that emits noise. They're always on the lookout for ways to improve the machine's sound. They've been working on the vacuum cleaner project for nearly a year now. Friedrich Blutner devotes his spare moments to his pet project. The trained instrument maker has constructed a violin whose only purpose is to sound great. He doesn't care about its appearance. The body is made of black plastic. But the ugly something or other proved unsellable. In the end, Blutner gave his violin an old-fashioned look. Hier ist mal eine Geige mal imitiert auf sehr alt. Man sieht das nicht, dass das mit teilweise Edelharzen gemacht ist. Von außen sieht das aus wie jede alte Geige. Die hat eine Individualität, die hat eine persönliche Ausstrahlung. Wenn Sie so wollen, da steckt etwas von der Seele des Geigenbauers drin. Und sie riecht auch wie Holz. Und das ist wichtig auch für einen sensiblen Musiker, dass er die klassische Anmutung hat. Since then, the psychoacoustician has proven that his plastic violin can compete with classical wooden models. Young musicians in particular buy the violin from the sound laboratory. Es sind ausgesprochene Solisteninstrumente mit einem sehr großen, sehr tragfähigen Ton, sehr brillant, bei, optimaler, bei optimalem Handling. Das heißt, die, der Aufzu der, die aufzuwendende Kraft ist sehr optimal also ausgestaltet und es ist ein, ein wunderbares Spielgefühl. Many musicians, however, remain skeptical about the plastic instrument. The power of the senses sometimes counts for more than the mere sound. Wir haben an der Geige sehr klar und sehr deutlich gelernt, wie wichtig Multisensualität ist. Ja, es gibt kein anderes Beispiel, wo wir so klar immer wieder die Hinweise bekommen haben, die Wahrnehmung ist ganzheitlich. Und hier spielt das Auge eine Riesenrolle, auch kulturell geprägt. Hier spielt Geruch. Die Anmutung, das Taktile, wie fühlt es sich an? Und am Ende wird alles eins. More and more supermarket chains are discovering how to make money with people's senses. Like here in Tonisforst, a small German town near Dusseldorf. For some reason or other, customers seem less stressed. The supermarket chain Real is testing new technologies, new merchandising systems and new payment methods. Most of these changes are invisible to customers and the robot is only a gimmick. But something else has led customers to state in questionnaires that they feel like they're on holiday while shopping here. This feeling is no coincidence. The supermarket chain paid a steep price for it. At the fish counter, a light scent of herbs from Provence produces a holiday feeling. Artificially created, of course. Special speakers give off the faint sounds of seagulls, and animated fish swim about on the floor. We have for a year this market as Future Store new eröffnet. Und sehen seit einem Jahr eine deutliche Umsatzsteigerung über den gesamten Markt, über alle Bereiche. Das kann man nicht immer an einem einzelnen Effekt festmachen. Sie können nicht mal sagen, weil wir jetzt im Frischfischbereich eine Verkaufsraumbeduftung einsetzen, haben wir einen höheren Umsatz. Aber wir stellen insgesamt fest, bei allen Befragungen, die wir bisher gemacht haben, dass die Kunden ganz eindeutig sagen, dass sie sich wohler fühlen als vorher. Und das zeigt eigentlich, dass wir unser Ziel erreicht haben. The recipe is subtle yet simple. When customers feel comfortable, they stay longer and spend more money. 
Often, they don't even realize what's causing them to feel that good. Meanwhile, in Bilbao, the international color elite have arrived. For Per Nima, the Axo Nobel representative, the moment of truth is about to begin. Experts from the auto and furniture industries, washing machine and motorcycle manufacturers, color producers and freelance designers, organized by the American Color Marketing Group. The only purpose of the conference is to come up with a unique color trend. Usually these meetings are strictly confidential and no cameras are allowed. Well, it's about talking about what is going on in society uh, with design. That's what we're doing today, the design, the lifestyle, things happening. And uh, what we're going to do tomorrow is move that to color and sorting out all the tendencies that we've been talking about. And then try to find out if this is going to happen, what does that mean in color? They talk about climate change, the economic crisis, Barack Obama and new architecture and what all this means for colors. I see the green and the, uh, the blue. Next continent is Africa. Africa can only go up. Yeah. I'm a member of Kiva, so that's part of the micro uh, credit. So, so I, I give money to women across the world. Yeah. Those micro credits, they are all taken by women. Yeah. There are n no, no man among that, not only in India and in South America and everywhere. So family structures, we are totally going into nuclear family mode and huge mobility because you're traveling much more to live in out cities outside which were your own. If you look at design, what is green design? I mean, apart from the material, which is recycled or whatever, what does it look like? How can you define green design? There's a brown that's towards a, a violet uh, brown, a, a little reddish, a really pretty true gray, and then a, a light gray. Do you think we, we work with this? We want to work with this? Yeah. yeah. After the first two days, the joint direction begins to emerge. Per Nima's assumptions were headed in the right direction. The blues I brought is right, right there, and the purples, and the yellow is good. This is this, the clothes. My green is for an interior, it's for architecture, and a lot of the people here are working with motorcycles, so I'm doing fine. <laughs> the color marketing group was established in 1962 with over 1,000 members it is the world's most powerful trade organization devoted to color. Their claim is color sells. The right color sells better. However, even in a globalized world, they need to be aware of regional differences. John Bradenfurter is a color consultant and the current president of the Color Marketing Group. He attends all the regional meetings in America, Europe, and Asia. We had a presentation this morning. They showed some statistics on car colors in Asia. And evidently, for some reason, in Thailand, there's a uh, adversity to white. And it was a very small segment where, where the rest of Asia uh, was accepting of white. And it, it was obviously a cultural uh, aspect. And these are the type of research things that you, there's a lot of information out there that you need to be sem sensitive to and uh, really make sure you do your homework when you go into a particular region. So there, you could have a, a wrong color choice that way. On the third day in the conference hotel, the color cartel is close to a final decision. After discussing general trends, the international designers are now searching for appropriate colors. Creative chaos, brainstorming, and a bit of child's play. But again, it's all about big money. When you see product, you see the color of the product. And you want your product to have the right color on the market so you can sell it. It comes down to selling product through color, of course, yeah. And that's why we're paid to be here by our companies, to have a better chance on the marketplace, yeah. The finale of the color marathon. 
In the last stage, a committee filters out the most important trendy colors from the many suggestions. The colors are less bright, a consequence of the global economic crisis, and they're not as pure, an expression of the boom in authentic handmade products. So this is then uh, the European trend palette that we've just decided on. And uh, it's for 2010 and 11. So you will see them on the market. Yeah. We had a lot of blues, uh, a lot of blue colors, and still a lot of green. And you see some shifts in the colors. They're more subdued than, than last year. I think it's what you see in, in, in the economy, the reflection of what's going on in the US with the real estate market, oil price, food shortage, and colors becoming less bright. Yeah. Of course, these guidelines are not binding. But the color producers and manufacturers of various types of consumer goods will adhere to these decisions. After all, they don't want to fall out of line and come across as unfashionable. So they ride the big wave as well and set a new color trend we can hardly ignore. Friedrich Blutner's assignment is also as good as complete. Today is his final meeting with his clients at Miele. The vacuum cleaner manufacturer is curious to hear how consumers have reacted to the new sound. We have then to the criterion Rauschigkeit a few attempts, a few modifications, also, to get out of the way. Uh, in this is Bauteil here. Herrn Schneider's entwicklung. I can see a cut smart learn with this. The Gs are all complete montiert. Yeah. Yeah. With this propeller, the tinkerers from the All Mountains were able to simulate an ideal sound. The trick worked. Das ist ja angenehmes Rauschen, was ganz die Leute assoziieren damit, dass deutlich mehr Saugleistung an der Düse daraus kommt. Spannender war, dass Konsumenten die Funktion des Saugens sehr selektiv wahrnehmen. Dass man also gewissermaßen unbewusst die Ohren spitzt, äh, um solche Geräuschmuster äh, wahrzunehmen. Überlegt bei der telefonischen Abstimmung. Newly manufactured components will make the vacuum cleaner sound louder and be more powerful. Dieses hat dann noch mal in den Zwischenräumen. Nee, das haben wir noch nicht gesehen. Das sieht aber sehr interessant aus. The strong rustling of leaves, but without the disruptive snapping and whistling. A lot of wind for a little more rustle. Cicel Tollas is also in the last phase of her assignment. She has started to create a corporate smell for the hotel chain, based on what she has smelled in the hotel, in Berlin, and in Switzerland. The trained chemist has access to nearly 8,000 different scents. For a new creation, she mixes up to 200 different ingredients. The new smell for Swiss Hotel consists of dozens of elements. I have tried to really clear and precise to work and a bit the natural elements to focus on, so like the berge, ice, steel and the clear schweiß. But I have also Intention, also a bit spicy, a bit of a rein to give. And da haben wir die rote Farbe aufgegriffen und wir haben dann ein bisschen gearbeitet mit ähm, rote Pfeffer und ich glaube die Kombination von sehr streng und dann plötzlich wow, ein, ein kleiner Richtung, die einen überrascht. It's a long process. For several weeks, Cicel has been testing new aromas, weighing her essences drop by drop mixing and trying out new combinations. Her concept of including even unusual smells evoked some initial skepticism on the part of her client. I have darauf insisted that the smell of money da reinkam, der Kunde war so, nee, was, was soll das, you know, Schweiz, ja, yeah, wieso, ja, yeah, Geld ist in der Schweiz wichtig. The new smell for Swiss Hotel is finished at last. A new identity, recognizable only to the nose. 
a fine new weapon in the brutal fight for customers. What will the hotel director say? Jetzt sind wir, ich bin gespannt. Das ist hier und hier. Die Berge, der Schnee, der Eis. Das riecht man. Das Geld rieche ich nicht. Nee? Du zisselt das Geld, lebt mir den Rest gar nicht. Ich schon. Oh yes, ganz viel. Ja, 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 ja. <lacht> Kommt so langsam, muss man ein bisschen Zeit geben. Der erste Eindruck ist... Äh, Sehr schön. Höhe Berge mit Linden ja. drauf. Kannst du damit leben? <lacht> ich ich glaube, ich kann gut damit leben. Das Geld fehlt mir so ein bisschen. Das ah, <lacht> ja, 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 vielleicht auch ein bisschen mehr Geld. <lacht> Beloved Money. Even when it comes down to the smell, it's all about the money. Is this pure sensuality? Wir hoffen und nein, wir glauben. Wir, wir glauben wirklich ganz fest daran, dass der Geruch unser Angebot abrundet von einem Wohlfühlgefühl im Hotel. Und ja, der Geruch dazu. Und ich glaube auch, dass es uns das wirtschaftlich weiterbringt. From now on, a well-designed mix will flow through the air conditioning system. Very subtle, almost unnoticeable. A cocktail of wood, red pepper, snow, steel, mountain breeze, and money. The hidden seducers are becoming more and more ingenious. The battle for our senses has only just begun.